What's up guys, it's your favorite Rust user here and today I'm going to go over a project called Serial Monitor that I built with Towery. Now what is Towery? Um, Towery is a lightweight cross-platform um, application hosting um, that you can basically build a website on and Towery will run Rust for a backend and help you set up a desktop application which is super powerful because I'm comfortable with Next.js you can make some nice UIs very quickly and Towery just takes care of running all the desktop application and the cross-platform compilation and all this um, well not so much but we're just gonna go ahead and start with um, Cloning this repository. So let's get started with that. Very cool. And I'm just going to change folder into it because of um, don't ask me why. Towery, serial monitor. Go ahead and open it up and welcome to the project. First thing we're going to run is um, uh, npm install because it's a website. So I, I use Next.js. So we're just going to install all of the dependencies. And um, basically, I'm just going to take you a, through a tour. Um, you can look at the getting started page um, on Talvi right here. Um, so, you know, uh, guides, getting started, prerequisites, go ahead, and this will like basically detect your operating system and help you set it up for whatever OS you have. So I have Linux, so this is all the Linux steps. Um, so you can also do a quick startup, and I'm going to pick this Next.js right here, and this will help you get started with Next.js. Very, very important. Make sure you add this to your package.json. And um, something else important is adding this export.nextjs. We'll get this into a second, or not dot, but we'll get that. We'll get into this in a second. But that's very important. Um, so let's go ahead and take a take a look at the JavaScript. So this technically is a website. So I can just do npm run dev, and this will open up a local host, and basically it will eventually load when it's done loading. Awesome, and here is my project, and obviously I don't have um, a lot of these commands because this is going to the Rust backend, so we're just going to ignore all these errors. Um, so this is the serial monitor, this is the UI. I can go in here and tweak all sorts of things. Here's my index.js. Um, let's just focus on changing the background color. I'm not going to take you through a tour of basically all of the stuff in here, but you know, if we wanted to set this to red, we can see instant changes on our website, and you can see here's a red background, which is very ugly. So I'm going to fix that immediately. Super cool, right? And this is just a website in Next.js. I'm honestly just running a website in Next.js. Let's take a browser. Awesome. This is it right here. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, if we wanted to run it on Towery on a desktop application, so what we do is cargo Towery, if I can spell, and then we'll type dev. And if you've set your Towery up, uh, um, up correctly, um, using the uh, tutorial that I sent. That's very, very cool, and you should be able to get started very quickly. This is compiling all of the um, stuff that is for Rust, so maybe we can uh, take a few pokes around in the Rust real quick. So this is basically all the Rust right here. So let's go into source, and I have this thing called serial wrappers, which does all my serial commands. Don't worry about that. And this is the gloriful, gloriful? I just made that word. Um, Tauri, or next main in Rust. So this is how I have everything set up. As you can see right here are all of the commands that I'm going to need in my JavaScript. The JavaScript talks to the Rust and these are the commands right here. Um, don't worry about this. This is for global access to my functions. Um, and basically I just, um, anytime you see, let's check this open serial right here. This basically, um, does a mutation here for global stuff. And then the important stuff is this serial, serial wrapper um, yeah, input in it. So basically this is just going to initialize the um, uh, serial and I can just go into my serial wrappers right here and um, look where that is. So, so where's that? It's right here and you can see my serial, um, I'm using serial port for um, my Rust, this is a blocking library. Um, that is a work in progress. If you would like to fix it, go ahead, please make some commits. I will merge them, that would be awesome. Um, but that is something I need to work on. So this is a blocking code, but that's okay. Um, I have some silly fixes. And as you can see, after um, the compilation is finished, we have a desktop application right here running our website. Now let me take you a little guide through what this actually does. So I can go in here um, and check my uh, ports. Now, I have this little um, Arduino Wi-Fi chip. Don't worry about what it is. 
all it's important is that it is a serial interface. It runs a serial um, monitor thing. So basically, I look. I can show you the code real quick. And basically, what this is doing. I love how that opens up on half of my screen. Is um here is the code that is on it right now. Arduino file serial spam. Uh, open. This is this is it right here. I've just opened a serial right here and um, a delay and it just says hello world every three seconds. Cool. Um, we are going to use this one later. Um, so let's let's start it. So we just are going to press connect right here. Um, and you can see the rust. Uh, yeah, so I've not selected a port. Yeah, so that's an error. So we're going to go over here and select this one, which is all of the serial USB ports that are available on my operating system. I'm gonna click this one. Then I'm going to cl click connect and you can see it's just <laughs> world hello, um, but that's the idea. It basically is going to keep updating. Oh, and I have incorrectly set up my baud rate. So let's set this up again. As you can see, you set your baud rate right here, um, 960. Um, I'm also working on how to closing how to close serial. Um, Rust is not my favorite language. I'm still very new to Rust, so this is a work in progress. This is just a tour through um, what I have so far. So we can go ahead and select our ports again. Let's select the correct baud rate. Press connect, very cool. And now we should see the correct output, hello world. And every three seconds it'll say this, hello world. Uh, very, very cool. Um, so now let's see how, how does it do this? How does the Next.js talk to the Rust? Well, let's take another look. Here's my index and I'll have my, my Rust on the side and we're going to need our main. Um, don't worry about serial wrappers anymore. Um, so basically, um, one thing I want to change is this hello world right here. Um, let's just make this an empty string so that there's nothing in the serial monitor when it starts up. Um, that's very cool. And here's all my JavaScript and functions. And uh, So basically, let's look at what happens when we press the connect button. So uh, if I can go in here, I know I need to make all my things into components. Um, but let's not worry about that. And we can see... Um, the connect button, which is somewhere in here. I don't know where, where it says connect. Hello? So this is the connect button. What does it say? What is it? Where's the label of this button? Oh, it's right here. So it says connect. I have a little ternary operator here. I just got confused for a second. So basically, um, this is to handle disconnect and connect. Don't worry about that. So what we have in here is we have an on click, or this is my button, this is my connect button uh, component right here. If you don't know Next.js, uh, learn it. It's very awesome for multi-page applications. So uh, this is my button, this is the label of what it says. Right now it's gonna say connect because it's always connected. Uh, don't worry about that. So we have this on click right here, and then um, we do handle connect. So what happens when we run, when we press this button, it's going to do on click, handle connect. Handle connect function is right here. Um, and it's asynchronous, that's important. And basically what we do is we do some JavaScript things. And then the most important thing is this um, command right here. And basically what this does is it calls set bod. Now Tauri has a, um, a library that helps you connect to your Rust. And this set bod is a function that corresponds to my Rust backend, backend right here. Um, so we can see that uh, this takes a state for um, global access to my serial library. Don't worry about that. Here and here's the baud rate input. And we can see that we are giving baud rate and we, we pass in a baud. So baud rate. Now notice the underscore and the not capital R right here. Um, and the not underscore and not capital R right here. Um, I might have mixed it up or whatever. So basically... Um, it's going to expect the format like this because JavaScript is JavaScript. Um, so make sure you um, label your things as such. And that's super cool. And we can just go ahead in here and set our bod to our, our global global struct. Um, we're using mutex, so we need to unlock it um, so we can have access to it. And then after this goes out of scope, it should be locked again and create access for other functions to use it. Um, Super, super cool. Now let's talk about um, the troubles that I had. This was fine and dandy, battling with Rust was fun, but um, I was having trouble getting it to compile on my native operating system and I'd like to touch on that. Um, so basically, um, if I were to run, let's just take a, a look at my setup here. So this is my package.json. So um, these are all my scripts right here. Um, I added a few in here, like lint, tauri, st um, start was here export 
uh, which is my, the most important one. And what is export? If I were to run cargo towery um, build, let's see what would happen. So I'd run this. It's going to lint everything and check uh, my operating system. I mean my code and make sure it doesn't have any errors and it's all linted and um, there's no dead code and takes care of all, all sorts of cool things. Linting is awesome. Um, so we're just going to let this run. You guys have a good day. Um, I hope so. Um, yeah, so anyways. Yeah, so it says unable to find your web assets. Now, what is a web asset? It's a good question. So in Next.js, um, when we want to build for production, uh, we want to get these web assets. Now, we did run npm run build earlier. Oh, no, we should do that right now. npm run build is going to build your website into this next folder right here. You can watch it grow um, as it does that. So after we've built, we need to run npm run export. Now, this is not in the documentation. Maybe it is. I had trouble finding this online. But basically, if you knew this already, it would have been self-explanatory. But once we run npm run export, it's going to create this out folder right here. And this out folder gives us this index.html and uh, compiles all our assets for us. And this is awesome because when we go into here, our Tauri folder, and then we go to our cargo Tamil, don't worry about that. Um, uh, our, 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 our source. Or no cargo config right here basically when we do development it's going to start a local web server on your computer but when we do production we want to get the um, actual uh, assets of our website so once we've run npm run export we're going to then list this directory the directory of your export okay cool so now that we have um, this configured we can run <clears throat> Tauri cargo build on um, cargo Tauri build and this is going to build our native application in Tauri um, so it's gonna compile everything it's gonna get our assets and we're just gonna wait for that to run um, I'm not editing this so hang tight we're about halfway through um, rest is super cool but Russ doesn't like me. That's for sure. I'd also like to point out my really bad code. Um, where is it? Um, it should be at the end here. Yeah, this one right here, which basically updates every second and checks the serial for the back end. This is um, not ideal. Um, I don't want to run this check to the back end every single second. I would ra much rather have the Rust detect a serial input asynchronously and then tell my JavaScript to update my, my serial monitor. Um, but I'm, I'm having trouble doing that. Um, but that's okay. I think I need to change my serial wrapper. Um, as you've seen before, this is my serial um, basically uses this serial port um, right here, this crate, and uh, basically just takes care of that. Do some error handling, checking, and then it talks to my Rust right here. So you can see like when I open port, um, serial wrapper init port, um, and it's basically going to uh, run this. It's go this is going to return a where are we? Honestly, it's at the top. I'm just going to do an import right here. So um, this is going to return a result. So we need to check for that over here with this match port. So this is going to call it match port. Um, and then if it's an OK, it's going to return true or false. This way, the JavaScript on the front end doesn't have to worry about anything. And uh, we're just about done building our app image. Um, and if all goes well, we can honestly just head over there right now. So let's go in here. Um, now let's just honestly, um, copy this path, change the directory to this. Cool. Let's list what's here. Um, we're in our tower, our tower resource, which is where all of our rest is. Now, what we're basically looking at here is we want to go into target and then we want to go into release and then we want to go to, um, uh, 
build. And then we went into the wrong directory. Let's go back. We want to go into uh, probably depths. Just kidding. Where is it? Oh, it's it's right here. Yeah, so let's list again. Um, now we see this serial right here, and I'm pretty sure this is the app. Um, so let's do clear. We have to do chmod, um, and then do a plus x, and then we're going to list serial. Cool, that's an executable. Now we can run serial. Awesome, that was so quick. Look at this desktop application. So you can see in here, let's honestly um, upload this serial spitter right here. Ah, this is the wrong name. Um, so this is going to connect to my my port right here, my little microcontroller that just spits out serial, and that's going to upload real quick. I could, I honestly could have done this while I was waiting, but um, this isn't the best. There's honestly a few fixes, and this is obviously not the most sexy UI, but Tower lets me update my UI like this super fast, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so now that we're done with that, um, so our our I just uploaded some new code, and basically this is going to take a serial and then spit it right back out in in a few seconds, I believe. Yeah, three seconds it should spit it back out. So let's select our bod. This is our correct bod. Um, press connect, and uh, here, uh, yeah. So I sent some garbage for some reason. I have to clear the cache, so I can say hello world send and moments later it should spit it back out how are you today it's gonna ask it back oops already connected send mm, what did I do yeah so I accidentally pressed connect again um, there may be some bugs um, well, let's try again I just press connect again. Let's say, how are you? Send. Right, successful. Awesome. Now we have a serial monitor. That's so, so cool. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you to get your Tauri project set up with Next.js. This was just a tour of my project. Now I hope, um, you know, I got stuck on a few points um, in a, an embarrassing amount. So I hope this tutorial um, enlightens you or helps you um, get your project set up because honestly, it was really fun. And um, I think Towery is really cool. Um, yeah. Awesome, guys. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for watching. Okay. Toodles. Bye-bye.